Can-Am people, brace yourself. Brace yourself. That's all I can tell you. Please, I, I'm not sure if you can handle this because I couldn't handle it. The tires in the back are pigs. Now ask me which one do I think is better suited for the trail. Marauders, welcome back to the channel. I promised you in other videos that I was going to do an initial review of my 2022 Polaris Ranger 1000 XP North Star Trail Boss Edition, and here it is. Anyone who's interested in a UTV, especially a UTV side-by-side -side with a cab and heating and air conditioning, especially Defender owners, should watch this video. I think you'll learn a lot about this machine and it'll be a good comparison to your machine. I'm not gonna tell you this machine is better than yours, but I will explain what features I like on this machine and how it's different from your machine. Thank you for coming back to the channel. I hope you consider like, sharing this video with a friend and also subscribing to my channel. Let's get to work. The storm's coming. I have said in other videos when I have done initial reviews, I feel it's important that no matter what machine you choose, it's got to be functional, but you need to like the way it looks because this is where for most of us in the market who are looking to buy, this is where our machines spend most of their time. We don't drive them to work, some of us don't, and, and we're not driving them to the grocery store. They sit in our garage and you're looking at them. And, and you need to like the looks of the machine. Now, without a doubt, <laughs> I've turned to being a Polaris owner, but I'm gonna tell you the design features that I really like about the Ranger. And we'll start off in the front and I'll work my way to the back. Number one, the front end redesign on this is so truck-like and those that those of us who own trucks can see it right away i don't care if you own a dodge a ford or a gm i think it has a piece of those tr of those trucks those trucks manufacturers it has their design elements in this truck this reminds me of a dodge light in the front the very bold vertical grill reminds me of a gmc the sculpting of the hood, I swear that's a Ford F-150 hood. I could be wrong, and I'm looking at that truck to purchase. So the front is very bold. They did a great job redesigning it. Very truck-like. I'm going to start up high on the looks of the features of the machine, and then I'm going to go down low in, in the specific things that we use during work and play. Out of all the cab side-by-side -side manufacturers no one integrated the door on the machine as well as polaris did no one on a defender the door actually sticks out two inches from the side of the machine and it's an all flat black door now it's a very good functional door but it looks like it was an afterthought on the design of the machine. And not that this is a perfect design, it still maybe sticks out a half inch, three quarters of an inch, but they made an effort, Polaris made an effort to integrate the front, the front fender lines into the door along with a the color, there's no color on a Can-Am, along into a color accent in shaping the body mold of the door. And they also did it at the bottom. 
There's an accent feature here that sticks out on the rocker panel. They extended it down the side of the door and around the back. I think they have the best looking door out of any side-by-side -side manufacturer that's meant doing a cab unit. I think that it was great that they're carrying the color and the body lines back on the door, both in the colored portion and in the molded portion. It just looks great. And the brake that they have, the swoop up brake from this area, you know, it's a little abrupt, but I really feel, feel that that works. We'll walk around to the side. Again, they carry the color back. They've sculpted this area more when they redesigned the unit a couple years ago. It looks fine. I'm missing my stickers on the back, but this is colored in the gray ghost that they have. Notice the accents, and I'll talk about the suspension, but Polaris always does a great job carrying the body color, body color components, the gray and the red, to the suspension. Gray arms, A-arms, and then the red coil springs. And they carry it even further on this model. Not to get caught up on the inside yet. Notice the red again. They carry it on the trail boss seat, and they carry it into the an accent panel on the glove box, and onto the steering column. I like that. I like that they're paying attention to design. These vehicles cost almost as much as a new truck. They should be designed like a new truck, and I think they're trying to get there. They're not perfect yet, but they're trying. So, the looks of the machine, I love the color on my Razor Trail Ultimate. Love it. And wow, do I really like it here. By the way, I also like the Defender, the Defender camo, uh, cam camo wrap that I had on the Defender and the Thunder Flares. I really love that look. Looking further at the design, I wish they had more of an integrated or an accessory Fender Flare that would blend in like the Defender, but they don't. Time will tell on a follow-up review if I like or don't like not having a Fender Flare with getting dirt on the side of the door. We'll see how that works out. So we've covered the looks of the machine, which I think are fantastic. Let's go down to the working part of the machine, the front bumper and the winch. I don't know about some of you, I always struggle on a new machine where to tie down the front of the machine. I swear some manufacturers have no tie down points in the front. Because Polaris designed this bumper, I think also to be integrated with a front snowplow, there's a ton of spots to put on it. Let's count. We have this heavy bar right here when you're putting this on a trailer to strap it to. Then I believe these are the plow mounts. We have a plow mount here. Then we have a plow mount here. Again, heavy tube steel. Then there's a bar. There's a bar right here, another location where we can hook our tie downs to. And I'm sure there's something under the frame where you can hook like that, which I don't like doing. So, heavy bumper, monster bumper in the front, a ton of tie down points when, when I trailer this, which I really like, and then places the mount either, I'm sure these are probably to mount additional front bumper components to protect the front of the vehicle, which I'm not gonna do on this. Those also could be used for light mounts, also, these holes could be used for light mounts. The winch. A winch is my number one accessory on any off-road equipment, especially a side-by-side. -side. If you don't use it to help yourself get out of a situation where you're stuck, you can help it to help your friends on the trail or strangers. Everyone in my group has done that. To me, it's essential. It's also essential around my property because my Defender and my Rangers were my, my rescue vehicles for my zero turn mower when I got stuck, maybe even in a creek. So a winch on, on the machine is essential. 
My favorite winch mount was on my Defender XMR. On the Defender XMR, the winch was mounted right about here. It was so easy to get to the controls of the winch and also to pull, pull the winch line out from it. I loved it. This is the second best, and it's a close second. This is an outstanding location. It's a Polaris 4,500 pound winch. I believe it has the electronic stop on the winch, so it won't damage itself and overwind. Very easy to get to the winch controls. On the side of the winch, very easy to get to it. I could also come down in here and access it, access it, but I can grab it on the side. Excellent, excellent winch location on the machine. This is another shout out to Defender people. Every time I trail ride, whether I'm out for two hours, four hours, six hours, every time I trail ride my machine, I flood the radiator with water. Flood it. This is not only a large radiator, look at how easily accessible it is. I took that off with one hand. Some side-by-sides and ATVs, they don't even come off. You have to try to go in between the grates with a nozzle to hose it off. I have almost 100% access to hose off this entire radiator and just flood it with a hose after I ride. Excellent, excellent. I love that they designed it that way. And by the way, it's like that on the Razor Trail and it's like that on the Razor Pro. Radiators come out very easily to flood them with water after you ride. If you're not washing your radiators after, and I've never once, never once had a machine overheat on the trail because I follow that rule. Knock on wood, right? <laughs> I just put that in while I was talking to you. Pretty doggone nice. Let's take off. Let's, and, and I'm not bashing Defender owners because I'm a Defender owner, maybe one in the future, or Gator people or any other brand. I believe this is the intake for the air conditioning, the interior air system. I think this, you can see the openings on the back. I think one of these draws air into the fuel injection system for the engine, I'm almost positive of it and the other one draws air into the CVT. Love that they're up high. I think they're up high on the Defender also. I love, and they may have, they may have copied Can-Am on this location. I love the location of how high these are. Another Polaris first, I believe, is that they have an easily accessible bus electrical bus located under the hood for either if you're adding a winch or you're adding lights to your machine you have a bus right here to make those connections and also easy access to get in through the firewall into the interior cab my radiator overflow is here my windshield wiper fluid is here excellent accessibility and it actually looks like it's pretty well closed off to mud splashing up from the fender flares, which is great. I like that unlike on my Razor Pro, where their washer head is located in the hood, so it's always tethered. I like that Polaris put the wash spraying unit off on the upper fender for ease of removing the hood and accessing this area. Integrated into the front of the machine, is a front camera, which after using it on the Razor Pro, I had to have it on my Razor Trail, and then it was a must for this machine. Why do you need a front mount camera? If you're trail riding hills, it is extremely helpful 
when you're cresting a tall hill, I'll have that camera on so when I get to the top of the crest, I can look at it quickly to see if anyone has stopped on the top of the hill. Some people just don't know where to stop. They either stop on a hill where other people are backed up, trying to, their tires grabbing to slow their vehicle, or on the top of the hill where they can't be seen on a crest. That camera really helps in that situation. Also in tight areas, when you're crossing a trail, a bridge on the trail, or working with your yard when you're near a car or near a tree, you don't want to damage the body panels on the vehicle. The camera really helps. We have them in our cars. Why shouldn't we have them on our off-road vehicles? Again, I think Polaris led the industries with cameras on their vehicles. I had to add one. It was very expensive to add, it to add a camera, a rear camera to my Defender Limited. I'm glad Polaris included it in this package. It was a great move. I've been asked, which one, Gator, Defender, Ranger, which one would I most recommend for an on-trail machine? Well, if I said in one of the comments, I would probably recommend something that's more meant for the trail, like a Razor Trail, like a Razor Pro, General, uh, even though I've never had one, a General's a great machine, Maverick, I owned one of the first Mavericks, uh, Commanders. So those machines are more trail orientated. Not that a utility side-by-side -side isn't, but those are really more aggressive, moderate to aggressive trail machines. This machine will see the trail. All the trails I ride, this machine can handle it. I have no doubt about it. If, if you want cab and AC, like my, my wife likes it, this is probably gonna be the preferred machine on a wide trail when I can take it because of heat and AC. Between all the manufacturers, including Honda, John Deere Gator, the Defender, anyone who makes a UTV, factory, factory, from the factory, this is the best setup to go on the trail. To my knowledge, it's the only one that comes with 29 inch eight ply tires on it. These are 29 inch tires. The John Deere Gator had 27 inch tires or 26 inch tires. The Defender XMR, I'm sorry, the Defender Limited had 27 inch tires. These are 29 inch tires that give you two extra interest in ground clearance, 14 inches of ground clearance. They're A-ply tires. So the tires alone make this the best in that category to ride on the trail. Second is the arched arms. Huge of Polaris to do this as a factory option. And please don't, I don't, I'm not forgetting that this is an expensive machine. These upgrades come at a cost. So please, I acknowledge that. They come, they're more expensive to put them on aftermarket because I've done it. I've done it on my Defender Limited. So Polaris, I think this is the first Ranger with arched A-arms. Again, they are standing. I'll give you a look at those on the, from underneath the machine, front and back. Look at these, look at these monster 29 inch tires and the tread on them. Pro Armor tires. The tires in the back are pigs, how wide they are. I think that will get it done. And then look at the nice A-arm in the back. So for off-road riding, for a side-by-side -side UTV, I put my money where my mouth is, and this will see the trail. This is, this is tops, tops in my mind from the factory already set up, and I think they did a great job with it. Now, I've added, and I will have videos out on this, of course, it comes with a 4,500-pound winch. Rock sliders are my second most important accessory for an off-road side-by-side. 
is, is rock sliders to protect the expensive door, which I think is $1,500 to $2,000 to replace. That helps protect the, the door and also the lower rocker panel. And then I also like a rear bumper, a simple rear bumper. I've had videos I put up three years ago where I modified a rear bumper to protect if you're backing into something. And again, this does have a rear camera on it. If you can see it up in here, it does have a rear camera to help you watch when you're backing up. Very helpful on the trail, especially in the Razor Pro. Rear visibility is bad. Helps you backing up the machine on the trail. The bumper helps in case you miss something, a sapling or a small tree. The bumper will take the damage and uh, not the expensive body components. Utility wise, this will carry as much as a Defender. The cargo box is inches smaller in length and width and maybe a little deeper in the back, it's tapered. So it's a little smaller box than the Defender and probably a little smaller than the Gator, but it's very functional. Heavy duty tailgate, very strong. Again, not sure why you need cup holders and a tailgate, but they put it in. And I thought they had little recess things in here for buckets, but they don't. The, the Defender did, but that's all right. Four tie down points. I may put way up in that mess, my Razor S, um, my Razor S Fabcon, um, aluminum cargo box in the back of this. I may do that. So very functional um, box on it. And I do use this and will use this. I'm taking, I will use the winch to help me take down trees and also during the winter and also the cargo box to move the trees. My first Ranger I had rattled like crazy. When I first got it, everything rattled. I, most of it was the seat belts in the front compartment. I'd buckle them. Then I'd put tape in areas. Doors rattle. You know, all of us get the, the rattle on doors when they latch. I, I put tape, Gorilla tape around it sometimes to get rid of that rattling. No rattles on this machine. Every machine I've had has had rattles on it side by side. None on this machine. I believe this is the first year Polaris has done this. Correct me if I'm wrong. On the latch that holds the bed, they put a little rubber wheel, little poly wheel on the latch that hooks on this component. I like that they thought of that. I really do. That was a great idea. Anything that you can do to reduce rattles on a machine makes it less annoying. I'm hoping there is no grease fittings on the suspension. Polaris has said on their other vehicles that they're going with automotive style bushings on them and to keep them from wearing out. I hope that's true. I can't grease these, these, these bushings on the suspension um, and you can on other brands, especially a Defender. So I'm impressed with the gauge, the thickness of this steel, even over the Ultimate Ranger, the, the, the Trail Boss actually looks like it has stronger A-arms than, than the Ultimate Trail Ranger Trail Boss. Shock components, again, new. Look at how wide this, this pig of a shock is. It actually got a rubber boot on it. A self-leveling shock. All my side-by-sides, Defender owners, I hope you can hear me, and I'm not bashing your machine because I really like my Defender, really like the Defender XMR, great machine. They all sagged in the rear end. The ground clearance was always higher in the front than in the rear, and I would always preload the shocks in the back to counter that to try to get it somewhat level. These self-leveling shocks work this thing sits a little rear end, rear end high in its stance. I like that. And when I hit a small bump in the dealer parking lot, 
I could feel them re react and stiffen up the rear end. Another great move by Polaris self-leveling shock. I do think on a model like this, because of the cost, you really should have a high-end adjustable shock, adjustable valving shock. I hope that's coming uh, in the future on that because I think it's needed. Give you a look at the engine compartment. Same horsepower as a Defender, probably close in torque to a Defender, 82 horsepower. The Defender is a V-twin. This is a, a parallel twin. I'm going to show you something that's going to shock Can-Am people. Can-Am people, brace yourself. I don't know if you're ready to see this. Brace yourself. That's all I can tell you. Please, I, I'm not sure if you can handle this because I couldn't handle it. I almost passed out when I saw it for the first time. Oh, sheer excitement. Do you see it? Can you see it? <laughs> you won't get it if you don't own a Can-Am. I'm 56 years old, I'm going on 57. I like to service my own equipment. And uh, it's just, it, to me, it's exercise. It's better than being on the couch. Uh, I don't love doing it, but I kind of like doing it. And it's exercise. The oil filter on this machine is easily accessible. You don't have to take off, take out seats, rear firewalls, panels, screw plates that are covering, plates that are covering a, a, a paper filter element, not a, a, a metal enclosed filter, spin-off filter. It's easily accessible and I was ready for it. I just was not looking forward to any more Can-Am oil changes. Now, so many of you have watched those videos, you've criticized me on those videos, you've complimented me on those videos. I may end up with a Can-Am in two years and be, be taking it apart to get at that oil filter. So don't be upset if you own a Can-Am or Defender. I knew the difficulty and time it took to make those oil changes. I still bought it and I liked very much all of those machines. But I am looking forward to an hour or less oil change on this vehicle. To me at my age, that's big. Give you one last look at the engine compartment. This engine is a legend. Essentially, it's the same engine, similar engine that's in the Razor Pro, 181 horsepower. The Razor 900, which is 75 horsepower. I have really never heard a lot of complaints about Polaris's parallel twin engines. I have been led to believe that they're bulletproof. Again, the air filter is easily accessible for the engine. There we get the fuel injection components. This is the exhaust for the CVT. Let's walk around to the other side. Again, I'll give you the look at that, that huge self-leveling shock and the suspension. Really did a great job. On this side, we have the compressor, I believe, for the air conditioning components with a belt. This is the fresh air intake for this belt component. This is the fresh air intake here up high. This is the exhaust for that belt assembly. And that's also the exhaust. So really you want to take it in water. You wouldn't want to go that much higher in the water. Exhaust system. Look at, how, look at Polaris comes off with double pipes on a Ranger. You got to love that mass. It's got to be double pipes here. Let's give you a light. So double pipes off the manifold then down to a single pipe, and then a huge muffler on the back. 
What I like about this Ranger, which I was shocked, it's quieter than any Ranger I've had before. It may even be quieter than the Defender. And in my neighborhood, I like that. I don't want a loud machine. I will say this to all of you watching. I actually think loud mufflers on off-road equipment cost us our trails by annoying our neighbors. So I applaud aftermarket exhaust companies that are making quieter mufflers that still have a good tone. Any of you, and I know snowmobile people know this and people who fly combustion in your remote control plane, keep your equipment as quiet as you can. Please, it's, make it enjoyable for those around you. Great job on the engine compartment. Marauders, welcome to underneath my uh, Polaris Ranger 1000 XP North Star Trail Boss Edition. That's a mouthful. But what I'm seeing down here, I love it. Okay? I hope you can see how smooth and flat the bottom of this machine is and how the A-arms, how sharp this angle is on the A-arms so that reduces the risk of being damaged by rocks and also being caught on a root and also helps in a mud hold. But things get better than this even down here. Since I bought my first Polaris I bought in 2006, it was a Ranger. They've learned a lot and they're improving their vehicles. They won me back. This is the prop shaft. If you can see the grease fitting, it's easy to get to. They have a nice large opening. You just have to rotate the wheels to get to that Zerk fitting and to grease it. Love it. And I'm sure it's the same way on my Razor Trail. And it's that way on my, shine the light in with you, and it's that way on the Razor Pro. Very easily accessible. Here's the drain plug for the crane case to drain the oil, very accessible, love that. And this has got to be the drain for the transmission. Again, easily accessible. Great job, Polaris. Give you a look at the suspension. Now ask me which one do I think is better suited for the trail. These components, again, you could use that to hurt your machine, hook or tie it down on a trailer. I use a two inch ball insert on the back. That's what I use to strap it. Some people, I, ju I just never felt funny hooking it on these holes, but I know some people do. This rear panel is all metal. This is thick poly and probably the front, the, fr the front skid plate is metal too, but I don't know for sure. Let's get her on the ground and we'll take a look at the cab. Some have asked me about this jack that I have. It's a Pittsburgh ATV motorcycle lift. I bought it at Harbor Freight. My first choice used to be always Sears. This was a reasonable price at Harbor Freight and I have to tell you it's an excellent jack. I have no complaints about it. Before we talk about the interior, I just have to tell you, the access for the diff is also very easy. You can see the fill port on the diff in there. A little bit of a struggle, might take the tire off to get it in. And then the train, the train plug for the diff is on the bottom, easily accessible. Let's get inside. Door opens over 90 degrees to get in the machine, which is very nice. Good headroom to get in. Door shuts very si solid, no rattles. Defender and Gator people. This cab is easily, in my opinion, the smallest of the three. Is it too small? No, but it is definitely smaller. You even hear it with my voice in the machine. I think because the front windshield 
is so much closer um, to the rear windshield than the other glass. That's my best guess. It is definitely much smaller. I don't think it's too small. When I sit in the machine, um, I'm a wide guy. I used to say I'm as big as a defensive end, and some of my viewers laughed and put me down. Their relatives played professional football and they made fun of me. I guess now I'm probably the size of a, a big quarterback. Uh, I was 6'3", now I'm 6'1 and a half. Ton of headroom in this machine at 6'1 and a half, 6'2". My height is in my body, not in my legs. It is a little tight with a window down with my left arm up against the, the door in the window. It is tighter than what it was on the Can-Am Defender. Uh, steering wheel position, I'm getting used to it. I like the Defender that it was a little closer, a little further away than the dashboard and a little closer to you. I've settled on that I like the steering position on the machine tilted up and I always put a ball on my side-by-side -side or my tractors, well my utility side-by-sides and my tractor for around the yard. Instrumentation visibility is superb. Top notch. This information center that you can change, I'm not going to get into it now. Maybe that will be another video. It's the, pretty much the same as my Razor Trail and my Razor Pro. Turn the music off. Pretty much the same as my Razor Trail and my Razor Pro. The instrumentation is excellent. I'm not going to get in a ride command, but I'll tell you, I'm a huge fan of ride command. It's just awesome. Different gauges you can go through, your music that you can go through, um, of course the mapping system. Huge fan of Ride Command. How can you buy a side by side that's over twenty-five, twenty-six thousand dollars, some approaching thirty thousand dollars? They don't have a radio, even a radio, let alone Reich, but they don't have a radio. They don't have a rear view mirror. Now, I get upset because I think all side-by-sides should come with full doors. At least, to Polaris's credit, like the Razor Trail, it's not a great door, but it's good enough for me. It keeps the mud off me. They should all come with a mirror. I don't think this mirror... It costs some $10, $20 to make this mirror. They sell it for more than that. But it came with a mirror, and it's actually a pretty good mirror, along with the camera system. Front, a rear camera system. You can see the ball hitch. And a, Well, that front camera is outstanding, the view on that. And a front camera system. So... Great job, Polaris, again, that you got a camera system on this. Of course, it has a windshield wiper. It has a washer fluid winch wipe squirter on the front left corner for the wiper. It has what many of you have seen, work, standard, and performance. I, like, never use performance. I'm usually in standard. Maybe on a technical trail around the house, I'm in work mode. Again, turf mode, one tire driven in the back. Then you lock out the rear diff. Then... Polaris is seamless, seamless all-wheel drive. You don't even know when it's engaging and when it's not engaging. Show you on this, again, the door is so intuitive to open. The latch, if your arm is resting here, push forward on the latch and it opens. Winch control here, lighting control here. Great. Cup holder, stereo speaker. The light switches are lit up and accent lights on both sides, that little blue dot. Now, I will tell you, I did, am having some glare issues inside this cab, especially looking backwards. I've dimmed down the front instrumentation panel and dimmed down the um, Polaris Ride Command. That seems to help. Storage in the front, you know I put my underseat storage in here. Well, you haven't seen that video yet. I have under seat 
I have an under seat storage box here. That's a video. The clump glove compartment is very big. You can see that. There's also pockets in the doors for storage. Another cup holder, two cup holders here. That's probably gonna get bug spray. There's small storage here, which isn't the easiest to access. Little cubbies up here, which are nice. I love that Polaris is doing this. A wireless remote for your winch. So, so handy. Great job, Polaris. Again, leader in the industry. That's awesome. Heat controls, knobs. My brother bragged about his gator that it had knobs to control the heat, especially when you're wearing gloves. And I usually have the fan off when I'm in the machine to start it up. And, and it's much easier working the knobs and little buttons. So it is heated and air conditioned. The travel, the changing of the gears, very simple, although it's a little stiff, I have to tell you. But park is down, high is all the way up, then low, neutral, reverse. This has a plow control built into the software of Ride Command. And what that does is when you put your plow in low, it will lower the plow for plowing. When you put the Razor Ranger in reverse, it will raise the plow up as you back up on your driveway. A huge feature, especially to you guys that are using this as a plow vehicle, and I hear it's an excellent plow vehicle. That's just awesome that it has that. I don't know if there's too much more that I have to go through on the inside. Of course, the steering wheel tilts and your functions are the same. It has a ton. It has a window defroster defogger in the front. It has four dashboard upper vents. It has two lower vents. Of course, it has a stereo. What I am actually was surprised to find out was that the rear window comes out. You turn these knobs and I won't take it out. You can take the rear window out. That's an awesome feature. So LED dome light. All the lights on this are LED. Let's take it outside and take a look. Okay, you probably want to see me start this. Turn off the lights. Let's hit the lights. The lights, all LED lights are outstanding. I'll give you a walk around on the outside little blue glare I don't know if you can see it the LED blue lights on the glass even in the back the light LED, look at the accent now I don't think it has a daytime running light the accents on the lights are outstanding Marauders, one other thing I want to tell you before I close out this video, and I really wanted to cover a lot. A couple things I forgot. You know that the windshield will open just six inches or so, and then go fully open. On the trail in the Defender, when my wife and I rode the Susquehanna Trail, my wife and my favorite position was the window just open six inches and the side windows open, open, the side windows open. It kept the dust out and allowed for good airflow. Um, around the property, she really likes the air conditioning during the summer to keep the bugs out and the heat during the winter. Of course, we all love that, right? Especially as we get older. This vehicle is smaller and lighter than the Defender. I think it's about 200 pounds lighter than the Defender. It may be six inches shorter and over two inches narrower. It has an unbelievably tight turning radius. It's really surprised me how the width and the shorter length, but also look at how they work the suspension, the cut on that tire. It has a very tight turning radius. 
that's not only good for around the yard, but also uh, around your property going in between trees. So I hope you enjoyed my initial thoughts on this machine. I hope it gets colder so my yard freezes up, the dirt freezes up, and I can get out and take some trees down and drive it across the creek and get on the island. Maybe hit some trails in the spring with it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I thought it was pretty thorough. Let's respect each other. And I hope to see you on the trail, Marauders. Thank you. Storm's coming. The wind is howling outside. The tractor's warming up. I got to put it in here. And my car, I have to rearrange these vehicles. I think we need to look with the lights on and the low beams. Let's do that. width on the front bumper like a cow catcher isn't it I wear my car hard knitted hat on it. it screws up a little hair I have on the top of my head every time great stance I love I love the rock sliders that I put on good job by Polaris I have a video on that rear bumper is good to protect it waiting for these stickers to come in have a video, very fast video on under seat storage. This is a nice compartment. Battery access is incredibly easy. And one thing I failed to mention is one thing I feel, and look at how insulated they made this and the contoured backrest on the seat, but they also have a charging port where you can plug in plug in your battery charger right into that port. You don't have to connect it to the battery. That's a great feature. There's a side storage compartment. See how nice the lines of it are? The nose is just a little down and the back end of the machine is a little up and that's those, I think, the self-leveling shocks. It's got a real nice stance to it. I think it's a good looking machine. I think it's an awesome looking machine. Love that color.